Hey, Brother Roy here. Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, on YouTube and social media and stuff, there are a lot of folks that would try to overcomplicate salvation. And uh, that's basically what a group of people did um, back in the day that were called the Gnostics. And uh, we definitely have some modern day Gnostics in the camp today. So uh, uh, we're going to try to simplify salvation in this video. And you're going to have to put your attention span cap on for a minute because we, we, we've got to hit a few scriptures to make this real clear, real simple, and real plain. But uh, let's pray first. Uh, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for salvation by grace through faith. Lord, um, we thank you for your perfect King James Bible that reveals all truth to us by thy spirit. We ask you now to uh, just help this old jailbird from the slammer to um, be clear and concise and make your salvation so simple, so easy, so plain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay. So these guys, uh, they were called Gnostics uh, back in the, bam, right there. That's uh, Webster's uh, 1828 Dictionary. And uh, I'm going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to focus in on that where I've got it underlined there. This is uh, was what they liked to do. They who pretended they were the only men who had a true knowledge of the Christian religion. Okay. And that's what we got today. When you when when you come to the subject of salvation, well, somebody says, well, you have to pray this prayer, or you don't pray this prayer, or you have to believe this scripture, or you have to you can't believe this scripture or you have to go to the Pauline epistles. You, you can't get saved by what Jesus said. Or yeah, I mean, they, they, or you have to do this. You have, you, there's just, everybody's got like their secret, higher illuminated knowledge and understanding. And if you don't understand all the elements that I understand, then you're not saved. You have to, to get saved, you have to understand this and this and this and this and this, you know. And I guarantee you that when a sinner is being dealt with by the Holy Spirit of God and he reaches out, he reaches out his hand and says, Lord, save me. He doesn't get handed a theology test. <laughs> Jesus doesn't tell him, here, fill this out and if you pass, I'll come back and save you. That's not the way it works. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at some things. Look at John chapter one. John chapter one. We'll start uh, around verse eleven. Just how easy salvation is. John says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Who was that? That was the Jews. The Jews didn't receive him. The Jews rejected him. But what? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were, what? were born not of not of blood nor of the will of flesh nor of the will of man but of God see the Jews rejected him so he went to the Gentiles he went to the whole world and that's what John is talking about here John's not just talking about his earthly ministry as some hyper dispensationalists will say you can't come but to Matthew Mark Luke and John no no John is writing in 90 A.D. John, John's been preaching uh, uh, Paul's gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been preaching the gospel of the grace of God for decades, and he is writing. He is writing about 
those who received him, right? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them to believe on his name. What? Who are what? Born. <laughs> yeah, they, they were born again by the Spirit, by God. Uh, you know, there's some uh, some folks that tell you that you're not born again. No, you are born again. And when are you born again? When you receive him. That's just how simple it is. Keep that in mind for the rest of this whole thing. If you received him, you were born again, and you're saved. Point blank, period. Well, but don't I have to understand this verse? And don't I have to understand this? And don't I? Listen, did you receive him or didn't you? That's the question. Were you born again or weren't you? And it's not contingent upon you passing a theology test. It's contingent upon whether you had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and you received him in your heart. All right. Now, John is a little different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They call Matthew, Mark, and Luke the synoptic gospels because they were written earlier and they focus primarily on his ministry to the nation of Israel, his the kingdom gospel, if you will, his earthly ministry. But John's different. John's 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 talking about uh, uh, the body of Christ. John's 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 talking about now. He's he's talking about this dispensation. He's talking about we're in him and all, and we're all one. That's the body of Christ. He's talking about that in his father's house there are many mansions. That's our heavenly inheritance. He's talking body of Christ stuff. And this this and and right here, this isn't even Jesus talking. This is. <laughs> This is John talking in 90 A.D. saying as many as received him, they're born again. That's 90 A.D. <laughs> Amen. So we're talking about this dispensation, the church age, the age of grace. And how do you get saved? You receive him. All right. So uh, now back when Christ was uh, in his earthly ministry, they didn't understand that stuff. Okay. And uh, that's why rightly dividing is important. They didn't understand that stuff back then. Look at uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke 18, 31 through 34. It says this. He's, this Jesus talking to his disciples, right? Then he took unto him the twelve and said to them, Behold, we go to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and, and spitted on, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. All right? Well, look at 34. And they understood none of these things. None of these things. And what? And this saying was what? Hid from them neither knew they the things which he which were spoken all right they didn't understand any of that stuff back then but you get to john 90 a.d they all understand all of that stuff and have for decades any of them that are still <laughs> that by the time john writes this the rest of them are dead <laughs> he's the last one living okay they'd all been preaching preaching the gospel and so John, John is absolutely every word a book for us today in this dis dispensation as the body of Christ. Don't let somebody over divide. You've got to rightly divide. Amen. Okay. So, um, this dispensation, salvation in this dispensation, as many as received him, you receive him, then what happens? The Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit comes inside your heart and you are born again. That's that is salvation is not learning formulas. Salvation is receiving a person. See, it's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ where he comes into you. And in that moment, you are in him and he is in you. The Bible said he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. That's salvation, pure and simple. Have you received him? Have you received him? Is Jesus in your heart? Were you born again? That's the question. Not did you trust this formula or trust this formula or do this or do that. The question is, <laughs> did you receive him? Amen. So we go on and like look at Acts chapter 16. 
This is just how simple it is. Acts chapter 16, and we're going to go to verses uh, 30 and 31. Paul and Silas in the prison house singing praises in the midnight hour. The earthquake comes. The doors are all busted loose. The Philippian jailer comes trembling and falls at their feet. Hey, and he says, verse 29, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out. And he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen? That, okay. That's the bare minimum. The bare minimum for salvation is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's the bare minimum. Now, in other places, you understand more about the death, more, understand more about the resurrection, understand more about the blood. And that's okay. That'll save you too. But the bare minimum in Scripture is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll get over Romans chapter chapter 10. It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's some bare minimum. Don't try to add a, the, under, the mental understanding of a bunch of theological details to that and make salvation an exercise, an exercise of me mental comprehension rather than a personal transaction where you receive the Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his Holy Spirit. That's salvation. So um, that's what he does. Now, look at uh, look when Paul gets saved. Look at Acts chapter 9. Verses 4 through 6. On the road to Damascus, that bright light shines. I mean, man, knocks him down. And uh, verse 4. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And look at verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Lord, all right. In that moment, Paul believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul gets saved in that moment. In that moment, the bare minimum. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can take something from Paul because notice that uh, in 1 Timothy 1.6, this is what Paul says about his experience. Let me see. What did I have that? 1.16. 1 Timothy 1.16. Listen, here's what Paul says about his salvation experience. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Uh, Paul's saying, I'm an example. Uh, he's, he's going to. Now, that doesn't mean that the body of Christ didn't start until Paul. That, that, that is foolishness and nonsense. But he's saying, look, he's going to, I'm getting in early here, and he's, God's going to use me first to the Gentiles as an example. Doesn't mean the body of Christ started with Paul. <laughs> that, that, don't get off into that nonsense. But he says, in me first, God's going to show this. And what does he show? What we just saw on the Damascus Road. Paul believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was saved. He was born again. Now, you go down to uh, uh, verse 18 when he gets into town and he gets baptized. So what are we saying? We're, we're seeing a pattern here. Paul said, in me first. It, it, there will be a pattern to them to believe afterwards. So what happened? Paul's, Paul is in encounter with the Lord. He believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then later he goes, he gets, he gets water baptized. Water baptism didn't have anything to do with his salvation. His salvation was on Damascus Road. When he had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was born again. That's what he's talking about. That in me first, God's going to show you this pattern 
of how this works in this day and age. And then, of course, he uses Paul to write the Pauline epistles and explain every single detail of the revelation of the mystery, of the gospel of grace, uh, of this of this dispensation that we live in today, Jew and Gentile in one body, heavenly people, the, the difference between the, the earthly the the earthly kingdom uh, uh, program to the nation of Israel and where we are. All that gets revealed. But you'll have to understand all that to simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, people like to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 4. Which is the gospel, which is the truth, which is what saves you. Fifteen, one through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all. Okay, here's the gospel. I received how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. All right? The death, burial, and resurrection of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. He, he was, uh, uh, died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again. See, it's the person. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then, I mean, you get over into, uh, Look at uh, Romans chapter 3. Three and look at verse 25. Whom God hath sent forth to be a propitiate, propitiate, propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So there's faith in his blood. So there's his death, there's his burial, there's his resurrection, there's his blood, right? And then go over to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Huh? It says, uh, uh, get around verse 8. And what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Uh, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Not a formula, him. <laughs> for there is no difference between the Jew or the Greek, for the same Lord is over all, is rich unto all that what? Call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you seeing it here? As many as received him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As many as simply call on him, you don't have to understand all of the details of the blood atonement, the death, the burial, the resurrection. You don't have to understand all those details of the what. You have to have a personal encounter and believe on the who. See? But that's what the Gnostics want to do. The Gnostics want to make it a formula rather than receiving a person. See, they like to have, think they have a special enlightened knowledge uh, that uh, you, you poor sinners don't have. Okay, so we go on and uh, you see now that go to uh, 2 Timothy 2.22. What did Romans just say? You know, that if thou, that, 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 that confess with thy mouth, you know, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Now, now those people are going to say, well, you have to say a prayer. You have to say it out loud with your mouth. You have to call on him. You have to ask him to verbally make noise with your mouth and ask him to save you or he's not coming in. All right. Well, I, uh, Paul, this is that Paul wrote that. And Paul will also, if we do some scripture with scripture, he'll also Shed a little bit more light on that. Look at 2 Timothy 2, 22. Two. I'm a 
1 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2.22. Look what he says. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. With what? Them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You can call on the Lord out of your heart. You don't have to, you don't have to beat your gums and make, make, make noise with your mouth. That's what we're talking about. As many as received him. Huh? They received Christ in their hearts. Salvation is a matter of the heart. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That's, that's, that's when you open your heart and receive him. People say, well, well, well where's, where, where's the Bible say that? All right. Look at Ephesians 3.17. Huh? In your heart. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Listen, that's that's your inner man, your inner being, your soul, and your soul, your soul. When you, you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, that's salvation. Salvation is receiving a person, not simply learning a certain formula. That's the simplicity of this thing. And when you overcomplicate that, you can cause people to doubt their salvation, be confused about their salvation. Look, as we said in the very beginning, look, when I got saved, I'm not just saying from my salvation experience, I'd never been to church a day in my life. I'd never heard preaching a day in my life. I'd never read a page of the Bible in my life. But when somebody came to me and began to witness to me about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit was not was dealing with me, saying, that's true. What he's saying is true. Jesus is real. I didn't say a prayer. I didn't, I didn't know 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I didn't know Romans chapter 3. I didn't know any of that stuff. But I, I said, yes. I believe in that Jesus. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my heart opened up and Jesus Christ and the person of the Holy Spirit came in and I was wonderfully born again in that moment. And that's just how simple salvation is. Don't complicate it. Don't complicate it. Look, you. It, it, once you receive him, what? The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He's the one that wrote the book. He's going to lead and he's going to guide you into all truth. And you're going to learn about his death, his burial, his resurrection. You're going to learn about his blood atonement. You're going to learn about... Uh, so many things uh, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, uh, but you got to get him in. You got to get him in there first, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them; they're foolishness unto him. Don't put the cart before the horse. Don't don't make somebody have to know a whole bunch of theological details and stuff before they can simply open their heart and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again. Simple as that. <laughs> God bless you. I hope that was a help to you. We'll see you in the next one.